Yeah, this is number three. It feels, I think, like, what I – I was thinking about what to say, like, during deadlifts, right? Um, because, like, that's kind of been the question that I've been talking to with Surreal, like, all week was just, like, how training has gone coming into this meet and just um, – and I think, like, what I settled on was um, – like, that, that's not everything I have, but it was everything I had on the day. You know, like, I didn't really, coming into Worlds, like, I didn't really try to push anything. You know, we just kind of knew the objective, just win, stay healthy, and walk out of here injury-free, you know, which we did. We secured win number, uh, championship number three. I feel pretty good, you know, like, aside from some, like, cramping and stuff like that, which is pretty minor. So I think it was a pretty successful day. Um, obviously, like... This is like not what we did at Sheffield, you know, and that's always something as an athlete where you want to be consistent, you know. But from my perspective, this was a way better performance than last Worlds. You know, last Worlds I did 1020 and I was beat up out there, like just fighting for my life. And to be out here despite like the short periods, you know, I was having fun. You know, I wasn't questioning myself if I wanted to continue with the meet. You know, like I was, you know, like I, I'm, I'm healthy. You know, I'm gonna just go out there and uh, leave on the platform everything I have. And it was a very, you know, you know, we, we know what happened. You know, third championship. It was like I think a 97 and a half kilo difference. So not our 100 percent, but nonetheless, it was a pretty decisive victory. Who are the people that you like to thank, Jesus, that helped you this week? First and foremost, uh, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, and I say this like full heartedly just because like it's easy to fall off the wagon, you know, like when you're in my position as a person, you know, but I'm somebody who strives every single day to not necessarily be like the world's strongest lifter, but a good man, you know, like that's really all I want in life is by the time I'm you know, six feet under, when people are at my funeral, like, I want them to say Jesus Olivares was a good man. Um, so that's just kind of um, who I want to, like, thank first. And then secondly, you know, Saria, she was there every single step of the way. And it's it's kind of funny because every single time that she goes with me internationally, like, she's just, like, any hiccup that she has, like, the Worlds or Nationals before, like, she just works so hard to like just be there the best she can and just support me in ways that like you know like I uh, and thanks to Will too you know he was taking care of me with attempts and timing and everything uh and then Saria was like making sure I was on top of my water you know like snacks throughout the meet um she was wiping my the sweat off my forehead she was keeping me dry and cool you know like that's it's not much you know but to me it means everything and then thirdly, you know, my coach over there, Mr. Franzo, uh, me and Joey have – it's, it's kind of crazy when we put it like this because I think we're just like year four, year five, something like that. We've, we've been together for a really long time. And it's, it's just we've come from such a long way. So it's just I want to give Joey a lot of credit because he's been a, a mentor to me in this field. You know, like there's so many intricate details like behind – powerlifting and fitness that Joe is just kind of led through example, you know, and he's a good guy and I love him. You know, Joey, he's, he's been a very important part of my life. And then uh, after Joey, you know, it's just my family because they're, they're my source of power. You know, they're when I'm questioning myself, like how, how much deeper I can pull out They're They're like that little jolt of, electricity that just gets my gets my eyes all teary eyed so it's like like these people to me like mean everything you know it's like god my lord and savior like Surya, like she's my backbone joey he's my friend my mentor you know and then my family so it's like this is pretty much the only people that i really talk to on a day-to-day -day basis and then they're the only people that invest in me and that i invest back in them so it's like i in a way i owe them a lot of credit so um, I think you said it perfectly on our pre-meet interview where you like you said like I'm a, I'm a veteran you know like I'm somebody who prides themselves on being able to learn and move forward and just continue to evolve mentally you know I've learned from every world moving forward you know every Sheffield like there's just little things that you just cannot emulate 
in a regular training session. Like there's just no way you can simulate a world class environment at IPF Worlds at in a, in a gym. You know, like there's no way that you can just like emulate a ref having a bad day or six to seven minutes between attempts. Like it's it's kind of hard. I mean, you can do it. You know, like you can set yourself on the timer, and you know, over time, I think you can adapt. Um, but yeah, man, I just try to take as many lessons as I can and continue moving forward. You made the choice not to take your third squat. Mm -hmm. And just tell us, what, what was that decision about? It just felt way too hard for me to even, like, move forward, you know. And I was talking to my coaches in the back, and it's just there's really nothing on the line for me to, like, muster the gusto to go out there and attempt anything more than 455, you know. Like, um, that, that was – that was like a seven eight, you know, that's what our third would have moved like, you know. So the fact that the second attempt was just that difficult, you know. Fortunately for me and, and my team, we're in a position where I didn't have to. You know, I didn't have to. So I just think that was a smart decision because, like, we have bigger fish to fry, you know. We have uh, Sheffield in February, and I think Pete said we had 24 weeks. So I'm probably going to, like, chill out for, like, the next four weeks. And then once that 20th week hits the mark, like, it's just – it's locker room vibes, baby. We're just locking in, and I think there's something crazy that we're going to be able to do. I think on the second – on my bench, because I was talking to Will, and we were talking, like, maybe we go up 10. But then I was like, no, like, what am I doing? Like, I don't have to. Like, I, I just – let's just secure 250. Let's secure the attempt. Let's clean it up, get three whites. And then after that, you know, if we're going to jump to anything, that's that's where we go to. So, Walk us through, you know, what happened on that final deadlift. Oh, yeah. Um, I just started feeling alive. <laughs> like, the entire, like, during squats and bench, like, it just, just felt like I was, you know, kind of working on my heels, working uphill. But once deadlifts started rolling around, like, my grip felt good. Um, it just, like, I think – like Sank and Tamer, I think they might have had a card to potentially attempt the record. And I told we were, we were just kind of talking in the back. Like deadlift was like the only lift where we were kind of like going back and forth, trying to see like what's what's going on, you know. And I felt confident enough in my abilities to at least chip my own record. You know, we didn't want to go out there and attempt the 425. We're gonna save that for when it when it hits the account, baby. But uh. I mean that was that was maybe like the only like back and forth that we were going because like for anyone who's ever handled me like I pretty much just put my headphones down like maybe crack some jokes but besides that I keep my eyes down and I just like you tell me when to go tell me when to put my slippers on my sleeves and you know I just do 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 but for deadlifts you know I just kind of I felt a little animated I felt like I was getting some wind back in me and I'm the best super heavyweight deadlifter in the world you know. And, um, I just want to congratulate the guy, uh, Tamir from Georgia. You know, he got gold today, but, like, you know, like everybody knows out there. So that's just a card that we have in our back pockets, you know. Like, if we're ever in a situation where we need to throw on 425, 430, you know, as long as the grip holds up, like, it's, it's moving. There's, like, I, me and Joey talk about this all the time. It's like, as long as the grip can hold up, like, there's pretty much any number we can load on the bar. The Eurovision sessions were extremely fast. Did you feel like it affected you? Uh, to me, it just felt very similar to like my first two worlds. It's, that's just what IPF Worlds is known for, you know, is being cut and dry. That's why you see a lot of banter going back and forth between like the USAPL lifters and the IPF lifters because like th there's no way in hit like it's just a completely different game. Like it's just kind of hard to put into words, but I do have a very fair comparison between my last international competition and this one. Like with Sheffield, you know, it was – that was honestly probably like the most perfect meet I've ever experienced, you know, as far as it came to timing and flight length. Like like that meet, it was just smooth. I think it maybe ran just like 45 minutes longer than Worlds today, but it made such a huge difference. Like I think – myself and a bunch of the other athletes we can agree like that extra time is such is such a key component to where your top end is going to be because like we're not machines 
we're, we're people, you know, we're made of blood, meat, sweat. Like, we only have so much energy we can store and output in a certain amount of time. So, like, that's, I mean, I feel like there's that athlete part of me where you don't really think about these things. You just accept the circumstances and you do your best to exceed in them. But on the other side, you know, it's like, I mean, if we could get some more time, I wouldn't be complaining. What would you want a young lifter watching you to take away from this meet that they could keep with them to help them be a better person or lifter? I would say keep your composure because I think that's something that you can apply in every single facet of life, you know? And I think that's where a lot of people slip up and make mistakes and just open a, like open room for error is just because things get a little hot, things don't go your way, like just stick to the game plan, trust in the people around you, trust in your instincts, you know, if, if you have good instincts. So that's, I feel like, you know, can keep that short and sweet. Do you want to brag about your game day coach? I 100% do. <clears throat> I'll try to keep my best to keep my composure. <laughs> um, I don't know, it's been, a, it's been a really, really long ride. Uh, me and Saria, like, we're coming up on uh, year three in November, so <clears throat> I just feel like our relationship has been uh, a lot. You know, we've been through so many ups and downs, and we've just always managed to stay close to each other <clears throat> through the good moments and the bad, and uh, I just know that I definitely have a good one. Saria, you want to say anything? Um, I'll say that I agree with Jesus. It's It's been a crazy ride coming here, just from our first Worlds to our third one together. Um, we've both grown so much, especially myself, I would say. Um, being his partner, it's taken a lot for me to get to where I am today to be there for him. So. And is there anything in particular that you're the most proud of about his performance today? Um, I'm just proud of him for you know, coming here and doing what he loves, just showing up every day and maintaining his character with growing um, as a lifter, as a power lifter, and, and inspiration to many people. Just him keeping true to who he is is what I'm proud of. <laughs>